this hour, this moment of meditation and intercession in the Chapel of Grace, University of Medugri, Nigeria. We will want to pray that God will do something about his love in the world. The love of God is, is absent in the world. We just have the love of men. And we need to pray for the love of God to be restored among the peoples. And that means we have to understand what God's love is about. So that's what we will discuss. What is God's love? In the Christian love, the gospel love, the divine love, what is it? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this hour. As we meditate upon your word, we ask that we shall have fellowship with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have your way in our midst, O oh God, this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christian love, you know, when we talk about love, we don't mean the love you have in the books, the love you have in the films, in the movies, the love you have on the streets, the love you have in the dictionaries. That is not the love we mean. When we talk about love, we mean the love that is taught in the scriptures. And so we talk about Christian love, or gospel love, or divine love. And it is not a cultural love, and it is not naturally interpreted or culturally interpreted or conceived, but it is divinely revealed in the word of God. You notice that the ordinary love people talk about is the love they fall into. The love that, make you, that makes you fall. But we are talking about the love you stand in. The Bible talks about standing in the love. So we, we are not talking about falling into love. We are talking about standing on the basis, on the love as the foundation for what you do. And it's revealed love, not a conceived love. So Christian love is not a subjective love. It's not an emotional love. It is a decision love. It's a commitment love. It's a faith love. It's a worship love. And it's important we get these things clear. It's a love that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Nobody can love if he is not born again of the Holy Spirit. It is when you are born again of the Holy Spirit that you can love the kind of love we are talking about. You know, many a time the world will be telling us how to love. The world cannot tell a Christian how to love. It is not possible. They say, ah, we are loving. Ah, you should love this way. No, we don't take instructions from the world. If he's taking instruction from the world, then we don't need the scripture, we don't need God, we don't need Christ, we don't even need the church. We just do it the way we feel it should be done. We don't do things because we feel it should be done that way. We do things because it is revealed that that is the way it should be done. Otherwise, they, this love will keep changing meaning as it has done over the years. It just keeps changing, keep transmutating. You know, like a virus. We don't. No, we, we take the meaning of love. We take instruction on how to love. We take it from God. If we take it from ourselves, it's not good enough. It will just be situational. It will be love with interest. It will be love with uh, just circumstantial pressures and love without due information, you know. You can love misinformed, misguided, and misdirected, even though you are loving. No, we want to be sure that the love we love is from God, as God has given his word, 
and we learn it from him because we are committed to work with him and to work with nothing else. That is when you can love the Christian love. And the apostles taught so much about this love. Uh, Jesus was talking about this love and was also demonstrating this love. The apostles were talking it, they were demonstrating it. And we will take one of those portions where love is explained in detail. And that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And if, if the church will learn this love, our homes will just be wonderful. Our neighborhood will be wonderful. With the Christian love is not an ideological love. It is not a partisan love. It is not a racial love. It is a divine love. It's called agape. And when the Holy Spirit comes into a man, the Holy Spirit brings the divine nature. The Holy Spirit brings the divine character, the virtues of God. When the Holy Spirit brings this divine nature, divine character and the virtues of God, it manifests in goodness and godliness. The way the word of God has instructed and expounded it. The Holy Spirit also brings divine power. The Holy Spirit brings divine endowment of power. And it comes with valor. It comes with signs and with wonders. And that's, that's what the Holy Spirit brings. But the Bible says that even if you have all the valor, but you don't have the virtue, the valor is useless. You have all the power, but you don't have the character, the nature of God then the whole power is useless. So it's not every supernatural that we are talking about. We are talking about supernatural that is divine in accordance with God's word. So that is what we are talking about, and we would like to look into the word of God to understand this love as it's expounded. And then we pray that the church we learn this love and walk in this love. That's what our prayer is. So as we are discussing, please let's be praying that it will be a portion and be the portion of the whole church. If the church loves, the world will be lighted and the world will be salted. How we understand love in First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. Uh, if you look at that place, you will see that the first three verses of 1 Corinthians 13 is talking about if you have all the gifts, the powers, the signs and wonders, and love is not there, the virtue, the goodness and godliness, if it's not there, the gifts, uh, just like witchcraft gift. They are useless. And that's why Jesus will say to those who have demonstrated a lot of powers, he say, Lord, Lord, we did miracles, signs and wonders. We did all kinds of things in your name. And Jesus will still say, well, you did it without love. And because you have valor without virtue, I don't take half coin. The coin must have two sides to it. That is our God. So that scripture begins, If I speak in the tongues of humans and angels, but have no love, I have become a reverberating gong and a clashing cymbal. That's no use. Even that the tongue is just empty. The tongue is just a gong. And that's the point it's making. If you speak in tongue without love, the tongue is not tongue, it's just a gong. Verse 2 says, If I have the gifts of prophecy and can understand all secrets and every form of knowledge, and if I have absolute faith so as to move mountains, but have no love, I'm nothing. Even if mountains are moved, 
and there's no love, then you are nothing. That mountain is nothing. And then verse 3 says, Even if I give away all that I have and surrender my body so that I may boast, but have no love, I get nothing out of it. You know, the world will say, no, just do charity. You know, as church, you should give everything, you know, you have and give out. And they will come and say, I'm the biggest giver. And that's not, you see, that's not even how to give when it comes to the gospel. A giver that announces what he has given has lost any divine approval. If you, have, if you want to give help, want to do charity, you want to do philanthropy or whatever, you want to do it, you want to help people. When you help them, you don't make noise about it. You don't make mouth about it. Okay? It's different if you are giving an offering. You are giving, you know, a project, but not a charity. You know, you can make noise about it so that you mobilize more hands and get the things done. But if you are helping somebody, Jesus said, if you are going to give your arms, you must give it such a way that the right hand does not know that the left hand has given, or the left hand does not know that the right hand has given. It must be given with respect to the person that you're giving it to. Don't announce that this guy is a poor person that has given food and things like that. But that's what the world wants. And the church is being compelled to love in a way that the Lord does not accept. And the more you do it, the more the church will still be in darkness. I mean, the more the world will be in darkness because the church is not shining the light by loving the way the world loves. We must let the world know the way you want us to love is ungodly. It's against our faith. We want to do it the way it will be worshipped. We don't want to do it the way it will be advert. Doing love as advert is it's nonsense. It's of no use. It has no value when it comes to spiritual matters. It may have a lot of value politically, but it has no value whatsoever spiritually. And we don't want to love politically. We want to love spiritually. What? Yes, we move to verses 4 down to 6. We will be considering what are the always and the never about love because in these verses these two words are used that things that always love must be and things that never love must not be so we will see that in verse 4 it talks about some two alwayses one is love is always patient always patient love is always patient and love is always kind and this is very important you must have intention to be kind and you must have preparation to be patient if you want to love the way god wants you to love you must love patiently and you must love kindly and of course you know patiently and kindly has to do with godliness you don't be kind with evil. You know, you, don't, you can't be kind in an evil way. You know, some two people can just say, okay, you know, let me just have my way and tell a lie and fornicate and cheat. And then you are kind to the person to cheat. You are kind to the person to fornicate. Then that kindness is not really kindness. So we are talking about patience and kindness that is unto godliness. And then he begins to talk about the nevers. He says, love is never envious. Never envious. In other words, love does not want what belongs to others to belong to it. In fact, it is what belongs to you that you give to others. So love is generous, not envious. He says, love is never vaunting up with pride it does not brag never never it's 
Never. That is love. And once this thing is there, it's no longer love. Even though the world will call it love, but the Lord will no longer call it love. Love is also never conceited, conceited, puffed up. You know, always thinking that, you know, what he's doing is, um, is, is, is the best. You know, you, you don't want to find out whether what you are doing is what the Lord says. You just think because you say so, so shall it be. Verse 5 says, God, love never, is never rude. Never is it rude. And rude means misbehaving. And when you misbehave, it, it's not love. Love never does think of self. Never selfish. Love is not once you are thinking about, once you say, what about me? What about my own? What about me? Why is everybody talking this? What about me? That is hate. It's not love. At least by the word of God. Love is not about yourself. You don't love yourself and say you are loving. You have to love somebody to be said to be loving. Again, love, love Never gets annoyed. Never gets annoyed. Never gets angry. He never rages and runs today when people do anything out of anger. The person has an excuse. Well, I did it because I was angry. So, it's right. And then the newspapers, the news media, they will be glorifying the anger of the people. When people vent anger, they hail them and they say there's so much anger there's so much anger among the people so much anger and the, all they are saying is do something out of anger and once people do anything out of anger they say yes yes the revolution is starting the movement is beginning the people are talking this is anger anger is never love it will never be love and he says, love is never resentful, resentful, bitter, bitterness, grudging, raging, bitterness, malice. In fact, the Bible says that you fall from grace if you have malice. So it's not only that you are not loving you are losing. You are not doing love. You are losing grace. And the Bible says it defiles malice and anger and resent and resentfulness and bitterness. He said they defile you. So love never goes that way. Verse 6 says that love is never glad with sin. Never glad with sin. The moment you see sin and you are happy with it, you justify it, glorify it, that is not love. But in the world, when somebody is in sin, you are happy, you are supposed to be happy with it, and they call it love. No. No, in as much as you are meek, you are tolerant, but you are not happy because if you are happy, then it means that you want that person to end up in hell. You can't be happy that somebody is going to hell. You cannot be happy that somebody will face divine judgment. You can't be happy. You don't love that person if you're happy with him. The person says, well, that's what I want. That's what I want. Well, if he has a way of doing what he wants, that's okay. There's nothing we can do about that. But we will not celebrate that the person is doing what is wrong, even if the person wants it. No. It is doing what God wants. That is what love celebrates. The other one, the love will keep persuading and keep persuading and keep persuading. Yeah, we understand, but you know that this way you are understanding is not going to help you before God. Yes, you have the right 
you have the legality, you have the support of people, popularity, or whatever. But look, this is not right for you before God. Yeah, that's what you want. But that is not what God wants. That's what love does. That's why we preach. That's why we, we try to convince people of the mind of God. Love is never glad with anything the Bible calls sin. If it's sin, it's not good for that person. Even if the person says it's good for him, he's saying that because he is not spiritually informed. If he's spiritually informed, he will know that it's not good. You know, it's like somebody smoking, chain smoker, and a doctor just comes a doctor will not be glad, even if that doctor is a chain smoker himself. He will not be glad with smoking. He will always put a warning, the Surgeon General or whatever, the Minister of Health or whatever, advises that smoking is not good. Even if we can't compel and stop you, we will never stop to persuade you. So that is what love does with sin. Love, love always puts that warning. That warning. The Jesus Christ warns that this thing will destroy you on the last day. Even though you can buy it and use it. But we will never celebrate it because it's not good for you. We will keep persuading and keep pressing. Praise the Lord. But brings another always now to end that segment. He said, but love, love is always glad to side with the truth, especially when truth wins. You know, when people receive truth, and when truth is championed and accepted, when truth, you know, comes out as is hidden, love celebrates truth. But love does not celebrate sin. You see, sin and truth, these are two things that love will always not be glad with sin and love will always be glad with truth that is the love the church needs in this generation you know the world is teaching us to love the world way and it has not made the world better because the love of the world is situational it's an it's a moving it's a moving target it's it's not standard it's subjective it's relative it's circumstantial, it's situational. But the love of God is stable. It has the nevers and the always. It's either a never this or always this. There is no situational in it. There is no circumstantial in it. It has a goal and a purpose and it's immutable. That is the love of God. And that is why verse 7 and 8 talks about the infallibility because it's a never and always love it does not fail and verse 7 says that the love bears up under everything there's no circumstance that changes this never and always nothing believes the best in all there is no circumstance that changes his faith in every, any situation there is no limit to her hope it is unlimited it and it will never fall and never fails. That is the law. It's a love of never this and always this in everything, before all things, without limit, no falling and no failing. That is the law. That's why you can't have it as a human being. You need the supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to dwell in you for you to produce that kind of fruit. And you have to receive that by faith. And we pray that the Lord will grant us this love. May the Lord bring us so that we stop walking in, you know, as children, walking by sight, but we will begin to walk by revelation, by insight. When you start walking by sight, you begin to walk by insight. Let us pray. Let us pray that God will pour out upon the world this love that we are talking about. Pour out upon the church this love that we are talking about. 
and open the eyes of the church to understand this love is plainly stated and children even memorize this portion we recite it as a memory portion but we do not take note nor do we get committed nor are we convinced or convicted by these things rather we keep copying we keep copying from the world we keep conceiving we keep con manufacturing new ideas pray that god will demolish every situation every relative every moving idea about love that has overrun the church that the church will bring this law of never and the love as of always the love of all and love and never falls and always prevails let's pray that god will give this love the bible says that if this love is shed abroad in our hearts in romans chapter 5 verse 5 by the holy ghost let's pray that the shedding of this law will be shed afresh in our hearts and that the world around us will experience it they will rejoice in it and whatever they do even if they provoke us we will still be able not to get there's nothing in this world that can make you go crazy everything in this world is temporary and temporal there is no reason why anything that somebody does or say will drive you crazy you must have a reason a reason to to still love that person and see if you can help that person to know the truth pray that god will give the church this love that does not snap off and go bonkers but love that perseveres to persuade perseveres to persuade and bring information to bear that will move somebody from side to inside pray that the lord will give the church this love and the church that has received this love shall show it forth among themselves and among the world thank you father for your love in all the nations your love in all congregations love for this generation thank you for hearing our prayers in jesus name we pray to god's gracious mercy and protection we commit all of you the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace that the blessings of god almighty the father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. You are great, yes, you are holy one. Walked upon the sea, raised that air, rain in majesty, mighty God. Everything routine about you is great You are great, yes, you are Holy One Walked upon the sea, raised the dead